subhanallah, we are, are so blessed to have a community. We are so blessed to have this Muslim ummah. We're so blessed to be able to grow together. Uh, I've grown up with, with so many scholars in our community and teachers and elders, holders of wisdom, and continually am able to interact with them or see them here and there. And sometimes through this very medium of uh, Celebrate Mercy, I'm so grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for bringing us together every single week to come together to listen to this beautiful recitation of Allah's word, to be reminded of all of the, the powerful, powerful lessons that are in Surah Al-Kahf in particular, and then the lessons that, that others bring uh, forth for us after this. So it really is such a blessing. And, and the best thing is to um, is also to meet people who um, I'm, I met when I was younger. So not only were you younger, but I was younger uh, when um, I was in leadership at ISNA. And inshallah, I've gained a little bit more, um, maybe a little bit more knowledge, a little bit more wisdom now through the mercy of Allah and through the hard work of, um, of all of our teachers. I know I continue to study as well. This is a lifelong journey and we should always look for knowledge and seek knowledge wherever uh, we can find it and look for community. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so merciful to us. This, this uh, platform that we're on is Celebrate Mercy and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is indeed so merciful to us to um, make available to us our relationships, our communities, all of our brothers and sisters, gives us such a source of, of hope and support and love. Of course, also because we love each other, we also feel so much pain when anyone is in pain in our ummah. And there are so many who are in pain. There are so many of Allah's uh, creations, Allah's servants who are in pain and we will be praying today, um, uh, later in this gathering for our brothers and sisters in particular in Palestine. Um, for now, what I wanted to do was just to, as usual, as is the practice um, and the custom at Celebrate Mercy, is to highlight just a few uh, of the ayat uh, from Surah Al-Kaf and um, speak about some of the lessons that we find in them. So if we can just maybe pull that up. Um, here we go. Okay. So I'm, I'm returning to this section uh, uh, of the surah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, pulls out for us in particular, if we hadn't noticed by listening to surah al-kaf up to now, if we hadn't noticed, but Allah sets forth in the Quran, every kind of of lesson. This is translated in uh, method, is translated as lesson here. Sometimes people translate it as parable. So method, something is, is like something else. So what a parable is, is it gives us lessons um, that are, that are contained within a story or within an example or within a description. And it requires some work on our part right? Because it's not always, um, the lesson is not always directly on the surface, but it requires us to be open to understanding what is being told to us and linking it with our experiences in life, what we know about life, what we know about creation, other things that we know about Allah. And so this is always, there's always something to be done on our part. We're not we're not simply passive uh, listeners um, and that knowledge, knowledge just doesn't enter our brain. We receive the knowledge and we um, have to keep our hearts and our minds open to really understand what it means. I often say to my students that, um, uh, you know, Allah could easily have made us human beings, created us like computers and have made the Quran something like digital code, where there would be no gap between, uh, no semantic gap. So we would receive the information, we're perfect recipients of the information and that's it. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us differently. Allah created us with uh, intellectual capacities, with physical capacities, 
and with this beautiful spiritual framework, this beautiful spiritual foundation, which is called the Fitra, which allows us, which is the foundation upon which we can further realize our spiritual capacities. But at each stage, it requires some work um, on our part and work by, by others around us who are helping to teach us, raise us, and remind us and, and give us advice when maybe we're not looking at things uh, so clearly or when our own desires are getting in the way. So this is, so the lessons are here for us. Surah Tarkaf is one of the, one of the surahs that is well known in the Quran as being filled with these lessons, these parables, these method, um, as is Surah Yusuf, for example, another story that is just, just full, filled and, and bursting with these, with these lessons that we can return to again and again and again. And as we grow and experience new things, we understand and see new things in e each of these lessons. So the problem is, you know, the problem clearly is not on the part of our creator. Our creator is merciful. Our creator is wise and has created us with the ability to be receptive, but we get in the way. Our nafs gets in the way. Our self gets in the way. And one of the things that happens is, is being argumentative. And that is refusing to to be open, open-hearted and open-minded to receive revelation, but we want to close off and, and we're defensive and we're pushing back immediately. And in particular, you know, human beings, we have this tremendous cognitive capacity. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us with this tremendous um, ability to rationalize and engage in logic and distinctions. And in fact, reason is a condition for taklif. So we, we are never morally accountable if we don't have this rational ability. So it's a wonderful gift. It's so important. But like every gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we, we can also misuse it. And one of the ways we misuse it is by becoming argumentative, using it as an instrument of self-defense, of self-justification of rationalization, of confusing other people, and of um, using it as a kind of wall to close ourselves from the lessons that Allah has given us, to close ourselves from the implications of revelation. Why? Because we know we're going to have to change. If we, if we are open, then, and we accept these revelations and these lessons, we know we are going to have to make some changes in our life. We don't want to do that. We don't want to change. And so our brain, uh, uh, we activate our brain to go in overdrive so we can just say, but, 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 what about this? What about that? And, and we're arguing on this level, uh, this level of, of words and um, and using it as much as we can to rationalize our inactivity. Even worse than inactivity is the rejection. So if we go to the next ayah, please. And nothing prevents people from believing when guidance comes to them and from seeking their Lord's forgiveness accept their demand to meet the same fate of earlier deniers and the torment that would confront them face to face. Now, this is very interesting. So if we can just see the, we'll go back to the first uh, verse again. So, so what is preventing us from believing? So the stage of, of believing, it comes once we are open and accepting, but we're not even getting to that point and we're not getting to the point of accepting these lessons, believing them, and by believing them, then asking Allah's forgiveness because we realize we've we've been wrong, because we're demanding other things. And here is where, where this argumentation, the demand comes in. What is it that we want? So if we can go to 56, what are we saying that we need in order to, to, um, uh, to believe? 
or 55, thank you, um, accept their demand to meet the same fate of earlier deniers or that the torment would confront them face to face. So we're saying, we're saying, no, we, we this can't be true because uh, um, in the past, um, you know, if people were, were astray, they did something wrong, then uh, let's see it. Let's prove it to me. Show me what happened to those people. I'm here. I am enjoying my life. I'm enjoying my life. I'm having no trouble. Um, I'm a successful person. Um, if there's something wrong with what I'm doing, then why am I not being punished? If there's something wrong with our society, our community, why are we not being punished? Or, or, is, or even challenging God, like, where is it? Where is the, um, you know, asking for some kind of immediate punishment? And this is the arrogance. This is the level of the arrogance that they're so confident in their denial that they're even asking for it. And of course, we should, we should remember then, and, and as we go on, we'll, we'll talk more about it, that this is why we should never get confused that if we are going through difficulty and we are going through hardship as individuals or as a community, that doesn't mean that we're on the wrong path. It doesn't mean that Allah is, is displeased with us because we know that tests and trials are part of this life and they offer us the opportunity to become closer to Allah, to engage in repentance, ask for forgiveness, and to shift our priorities back to what, um, uh, to what is important. So let's go to the next ayah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we did not send the messengers except as deliverers of good news and warners, okay? So, so what's important is that Allah's messengers, and especially the messenger, uh, uh, the beloved Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they were sent as uh, deliverers of good news, mubashirin, bushra, you know, give the good news. And as some warning, be careful, be careful about this, don't do this, there are consequences to this. So that, that's the message that they have uh, given. It is a very straightforward message. It's not complicated. The, the, the truth is, is very straightforward, that there is a law, a law is our creator, that all of the rest of us are created beings of Allah. We know that because Allah brought our souls into the, the uh, presence before we were even born. And so we know that it's a knowledge that's within us. It's not a leap of faith. We know every human being knows that, but we're busy trying to cover it up, cover it up, cover it up, deny it, argue against it. Why? Because we, we want the immediate satisfaction. So the messenger sent this, but it is those who um, uh, who reject faith. Aladina kafaru, kafaru again, as as many of you know, kufar, kufar is that act of covering up something that is good, covering up the truth, and so in that sense, it's not it's not unbelief, it's disbelief. This is why this is a, such an important translation. These are people who are disbelieving. They know. And they're covering it up, or they're in, they're in denial. They're turning away from it deliberately, um, and and why? They wanted to deceive both themselves, but also to dis uh, um, to confuse others, trying to discredit what is the truth. Al haq Next slide, and make a mockery of Allah's revelations and warning. And uh, we see it all around us. We see that the disbelievers are engaged in the most coarse, um, really uncouth, very uh, low level um, joking and uh, mockery of religion, of faith, of the truth. Uh, they think they're very smart. They think they're intellectuals. They think they are above other people. 
and their their humor and their mocking is so coarse and gross and and it's very clear uh, to anyone. I mean, even those who will go along and laugh with their very um, very base kind of joking are very clear that these are these people are just uh, are not really bringing anything beneficial. Keep going. And who does more wrong than those who, when reminded of the Lord's revelation, turn away from them and forget what their own hands have done? And this is really what it comes down to. What it comes down to is um, that we're not talking about people who have had not had access to uh, revelation or teachers or some guidance or reminders. There are some people in this world who really are in a very difficult situation. They've not been raised in a good environment, whether it's the family environment and the uh, society around them. And it's those people who, when we bring this bushra, and when we bring al-haq, the truth, and we bring that uh, to them, you see that their natural fitra connects with it. And it's very easy for them to connect but we're talking about about these people who are the worst people, the worst people who have who do not have this excuse. They have simply decided they want to turn away, they want to reject, and they want to take everyone down with them. And in doing so, also they uh, they then will go on and blame anything bad that happens to them on others, um, forgetting what their own hands have done. So they will take they will remove themselves uh, as active agents when they actually get to the point of being held accountable. Now everyone else is to blame, although before they were constantly um, uh, exalting themselves as full of agency and power and knowledge. May Allah protect us from uh, those people. May Allah protect us from being like those people May Allah open our hearts and open our minds to receive Allah's uh, revelations and guidance and to see the ayat very clearly, to know the truth, al-haq, and to follow it. Amin, ya Rabbi.